Alright guys, um, it is my seventh month as a quadriplegic. This video might be a tad bit short for a seven month celebration because this is very late at night and I can't afford to not upload it on the 21st. So I am going to be discussing about my seven, seven month journey, how I got my injury, and basically what being a quadriplegic means. So uh, I am Emmy, I am 87 years old, and I got injured February 21st of 2024. So it's been seven months since that incident, and how I became a quadriplegic is, it's a very simple story. I one time went into work when I was formerly able-bodied, I was carrying a very heavy package, and then on the way, uh, on the way while I was carrying the package, I fell, somehow slipped or something, I don't know, I fell, slipped, and hit my... C4, C5, C6, and T1 vertebrae. But I sustained most of the damage on my C5 and C6 vertebrae. So that is what made me be a C5, C6 quadriplegic. And ever since then, I haven't had the full function that I used to as an able-bodied. As an able-bodied, I could walk, use my fingers. Now, as you can see my hand here, I can't use my fingers. It just basically hangs, but I can pull my wrist back and... I don't have any triceps, I don't have any leg function, I don't have any core, and I did have a tracheos tracheotomy put into me, if you can see on my neck. So, there has been a lot of things that has happened slash changed the way I look uh, on disability itself. Because back then, you know, I used to know what it was like to be disabled because I had cerebral palsy and so I needed a wheelchair for that. But it wasn't like nothing big. Like, I'd need the wheelchair on semi-outings and things. So, I, I basically knew what it was like, sort of, to be disabled because I had cerebral palsy, but would need the wheelchair for semi-outings and things. But I did have my wife, at the time, who was disabled, who had SMA, spinal cord injury, for two to three years, I think, at that point. Two years. Um, but she was disabled, so I, I didn't have, like, a full perspective on what it was like being disabled myself in like no finger function and not being able to choose when you get in and out of the wheelchair. Uh, so I was an ambulatory wheelchair user. But for my wife, she was a full-time wheelchair user. So I knew what it was like to have like disabilities that would affect me, but not a full-time one. You know what I mean? Um, but for me, since I am a quadriplegic, I have no use of my fingers, no triceps, no core, no legs. And for every quadriplegic, their injury is different uh, beyond a wide spectrum of things. So... That's fun. Um, sorry if I'm rambling. It's a really late at night. We just had a fun hangout time with our friends, so. Wait, turn that shit down. Damn, that shit loud. Girl, if I just shakes the whole truck. Damn. Give your parents a that to remember. Let me I. What the fuck's going on over there? Check your ass up. You too. You ready? Worse on this trip. For fuck's sake. Wait, whoa, whoa! Calm down. <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh my God! You feel the door shake? Yeah. I felt my foot oh, shake. God. My whole booty shake. <laughs> God damn, are you okay? <laughs> nah, I'm not booty yeah. shake. I was like, <gasps> the fuck? <laughs> a long one. So, um, being a quadriplegic really means you have little to no use of your fingers, arms, and even legs. Because that's what a quad or tetraplegic is. Um, I've been a quadriplegic for about seven months now. But I wasn't a quadriplegic earlier because I didn't have SAI reasons or any other cerebral palsy that caused me to have a uh, quadriplegia. Uh, and this doesn't mean when you're quadriplegic, this is, does not mean that you are fully paralyzed from the neck down. Obviously, that can happen. Happened with my friend Donnie, um, where you're literally completely paralyzed and can't move anything. And I'm very grateful for the ability to move my arms and flex my wrist back because that does give me a lot of function that I don't have. I would like to put a disclaimer, I'm an incomplete quadriplegic, so I don't know how it would have affected me if I had a complete C5, C6, and C4, and T1. Now, 
I'm very grateful for the ability to have the function that I do have because it does help me in a lot of ways. Um, I can pick up things that my wife cannot because she has only her thumb movement and that is deteriorating from ALS. So I can do a lot of things that uh, I would consider basically in the beginning of my injury I wouldn't have thought I would have done that because you know I thought oh I'm just completely paralyzed because I didn't have a full idea of it but now I can just grasp onto things because of the tinnitus that I do have. Now, I'm going to talk about what is this bag behind me. This bag is an overheating slash travel bag, which you don't know about most quadriplegics, or if you don't know. Quadriplegics have the more risk of overheating, and the reason for that is because we get autonomic dysreflexia when we need to go to the bathroom, need a weight shift, have anything in discomfort with the liver out of our injury. So from that, that could bring on fever, pounding headache, and more symptoms along with that. Meaning it could make us sweat, but we don't sweat a lot. We only sweat from the level of our injury. So basically, I can uh, only uh, rarely sweat on my head. So basically, just my little forehead, and that's all I can sweat from. So that brings possibility of overheating. Overheating is a uh, very bad thing because when you do overheat you have a possibility of heat stroke and other things and very bad things that you don't want. So we use this bag to help us not overheat and these are just some of the supplies in there. Our supplies are several mats. Now these several mats aid in using a catheter, lying down on the bathroom floor if you need to be lied down. That's normally my wife. Um, and there's other reasons that a mat would be used for a spit up, if they're having a seizure, or whatever, because my wife has a lot of seizures, so. The second item is pain shots. My friend Luce uses these pain shots because she is a T10, T11, T12 complete paraplegic, which causes very bad back pain from really anything. So it causes that, and we just use these for leg pain, nerve pain, back pain, like any pain, really. I don't, thankfully, have to use these a lot, but they're there for that use. The third item is this lovely dandy spray bottle. Now this spray bottle helps in a lot of ways. One of the reasons it can help is creating fake sweat. Probably th heard that word and you're probably thinking what is that? Well since we cannot sweat from any level, so for me it's like all the way down here, Oop. all the way down there, um, I cannot sweat. So this spray bottle is filled with water and then sprayed onto us um, when we are overheating, when we are about to overheat, and to prevent the risk of overheating. Um, this has been used on me and my wife and Donnie and Luz several of times. It's basically the spray bottle mechanism. So this spray bottle helps with many of things and many of reasons that can really be life-saving life and beneficial for us. So that is wonderful. I like that. Another supply is a fairly common one. It's mainly glasses cleaner and perfume. Um, my wife wears glasses, so she just takes off her glasses and she cleans her glasses like every woman would. Um, but this is also perfume just for that, number two. So it's simple. After our bio programs, it's normal. See how lovely quadriplegic issues can be? This is a bowl. Now, when we do overheat or when we have pots, when we do have pots, this is useful because normally during a pots episode, pots attack that my wife has and any overheating, we could feel nauseated. So this little red travel bowl, even when we were not experiencing any symptoms of a spinal cord injury related to nausea, we could just have a stomach bug and this bowl would be helpful. So this bowl is very helpful. I like it. Enemas. Um, these enemas are obviously good because we cannot go to the bathroom on our own because we can't stimulate a bowel movement. We technically can with uh, DRS and uh, Enemas. Now we use, well, you can call them enemies or enemas. We call them enemas because it's easier. Um, but for this, it's just basically a little pill capsule you put up there and you know it gets things stimulated and after 30 minutes you go to the bathroom. So these enemas are obviously helpful for our everyday health. For the biggest step, all these catheters. 
I'm now you know, okay. So these catheters are here for a multitude of reasons. You probably are thinking, why and how? Well, these catheters, more than ten of them that you see on my lap, are how we go to pee. Now, since we get autonomic dysfunction from needing to go to the bathroom, these are very helpful in surviving our aid of survival. Um, so these are very helpful for anything, really. We like these. <laughs> They're great. So that's wonderful. And these are just basically little tube mechanisms that we go use to go to the bathroom. Gloves. So these gloves are used for, mainly for loose since us quadriplegics cannot put on gloves. Have you ever seen my hand try to go in a glove? It's horrible. Our friend Luce and our caregivers mainly use these gloves while doing DRS and while doing any other thing that involves needing to put on gloves. So these gloves are very helpful for those caregivers and Luce, who is a paraplegic. Diapers. Now these are not all the diapers in the bag. There, I think there's about six in this bag. Ta-da! Six diapers! But these are only two of them. Now, we use these diapers because our friend Luce has incontinence. And incontinence for us is, well, incontinence, its whole meaning is just peeing or pooping randomly without your control. Um, so, our friend Luce mainly uses these because she has incontinence issues. She's fine about talking about it. She doesn't mind me talking about it. Um, but she just uses these occasionally every week or so. So to manage it and it's way better than wearing underwear where she have to have constant accidents. It's most of our bag we do have a little bit more tiny teeny items in there but they won't wouldn't really matter to this video. So I'm a quadriplegic I have been a quadriplegic for seven months now and these are just some of the vital supplies that us quadriplegics need to survive and some of us paraplegics if you are a high T1 paraplegic or a T2 or T3 or T4 or T5 or T6 who gets AD <laughs> you will need these supplies. Not every supply you might not need, but they're vital for our survival and we are grateful for the supplies that we have because they're very beneficial for us. So that will conclude today's quadriplegic celebration. Thank you all so much for watching and I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tiny slash informational video. Um, so we appreciate you watching and see you next time. Bye bye. Oh, it fell. Um, I have been a quadriplegic for seven years. Oh, whoa, seven months. Wow. <laughs> My wife hasn't even been that long. So.